You've got an exam tomorrow and you haven't even started your study yet and you know it's pretty much already too late. But what if we can master the skill of cramming hundreds of hours of study in less than 10 hours? The truth is you can do this and I do this all of the time as a learning coach and as someone who teaches thousands of students on how to improve their learning and their studying efficiency. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cram at rapid speeds and run you through how I did it live on YouTube where I grinded through 100 hours of med school content on genetics in just 12 hours. And no, I'm not just gonna be going through the same stuff that you've heard time and time again from other YouTubers like Active Recall, Space Repetition, or Speed Reading. I am sure what I'm gonna be going through in this video are things that you have not heard before. The single most effective way to rip through hundreds of pages is to combine knowledge from all of our available resources using what is called syntopical reading. The first step before syntopical reading though is to lay out the foundations of our knowledge so that we can build off of it. For example, we've chemistry, this would be diving into the foundations of acids and bases before diving into the biochemistry of how like pH buffers work in our blood. And so it's like building a house. You first want to start off with the steel foundations before you put up the walls. But the thing is, is that most people skip this step and they put up the walls before the foundation. And so for information, it just seems like it's always running away from them. It just never sticks. It's through one ear and out the other. And it feels like this constant struggle to hold on to any information. So how do we lay the foundation? Well, to get into this, we have to go back to med school. And this is when I originally found out that this works. What we cover in one week of med school is more than I covered in all of grade 11. And so when I was going through this particular time, I thought it was also a good idea to work full time, uh, to run a business on the side, and to make sure as well that I was spending enough quality time with my friends and family. And so for my final exam of third year, I decided to leave everything to last minute. And I really mean it. It was literally Sunday and I was starting my study at 4 p.m. So realistically, I had about 10 hours of study left before it started eating too much into my sleep. But since this was the start of my study, I first needed to lay out the playing field. So this means exactly knowing what I needed to study. So first I get clear on all of the learning objectives that I need to cover. And you know, I would just get a list of all of these objectives and I make sure they're always visible. You wanna make sure that everything can be related back to your learning objectives. One of the things that's interesting is that legally your examiners can actually only test you on the learning objectives themselves. So it's always useful to use this as your North Star. Now, once we've got our learning objectives and we have understood what our exam is going to test us on from a bird's eye view, we can now scope it out. One really hot tip that I recommend here is actually speaking to other students who may be studying for the same exact exam because they can tell you which of the learning objectives they have found most difficult and they can also tell you which resources are most useful. Now, this process of priming is something that I've already talked about on my channel. But if you don't already know, the idea is that we wanna map out all of the key concepts in a list or a mind map and organize how those concepts may connect and relate with each other. This is incredibly important because it creates the foundation for our knowledge to build off of. The more connections that we can make between the enormous amounts of new information, the better it will stick and integrate with one another. So you can connect these concepts based on how you think they will combine together. And this can be done based on your prior knowledge. It doesn't matter if you haven't yet learned the topic, you are able to intuitively make connections that will already be accurate. So for example, let's say I'm looking at breaking down movement and it may look something like this. Right? I'm thinking about how the words relate to one another. I'm organizing them in a way that it makes sense to me. So looking really quickly at it here, you can see that when I break down movement into muscles, I'm thinking about what are the three most important things to know about understanding muscles? Of course, there's the structure, which is the somatic musculature. musculature. Uh, we have the somatic nervous system, which is kind of like what powers it and what it controls it. And then we have the different types of movements it was as kind of like the output of these two things working together, the structure uh, of the muscles themselves, and then also the innovation that is to it. So I go through that process. And now that I've written it in a way that it makes sense to me, I can go ahead now and read up on the available resources. And as I go through the concepts now, I can go through and alter that organization and previous grouping that I've just done just before, because I've now put myself in a position where I've read more, I've gained a better understanding of how it's organized. And now 
I can just go ahead and do that process. Now, it's really important to practice this technique when you're not cramming as well, because you want to be able to use this technique when you absolutely need it most. And if you practice this outside of the just cramming, then you will be able to execute on it as fast as possible when you really need it. So if you are using this technique for the very first time when you're cramming, uh, you will feel a little inexperienced with it and it can be a slightly overwhelming. So that's just something to expect. Now, if you get really good at this outside of exam scenarios, and I mean, after months of training this, you can even attempt to do this in your head, but it is always easier to have it down on paper. So you're just not constantly forgetting things. So I always prefer to have paper with me. So now if you learn in this way, you have now developed the foundational layer of your learning and that is complete. So you can now begin to learn in layers of increasing detail. By this point in the year before my exam, I was exhausted by what had been going on. There was a lot. I remember that my dad, his, his health at the time had been declining significantly and I really didn't want to be studying at this point. I remember that there was the first four weeks of the module and I had not watched any lectures. I wanted to spend more time with family, which left me with around 30 to 40 hours worth of lecture recordings to go through. But the thing is, is that I only had 10 hours left to study for this exam, which meant I needed a completely different approach. The reason that I'm telling you about this story is because I have learned that when you have an extreme challenge in front of you, you have to potentially throw out all of your assumptions about how you may usually approach that sort of challenge and now go ahead and reassess that problem without any bias. The only way that I would get through this is through a far more efficient pathway of learning. And that's mostly through resources that you can read. And so what do you think is a faster method of learning? Watching through many lectures at two to three X, one by one, pretty passively, and it's presented in the order that's generalized for all students or skimming and reading relevant parts of a textbook actively in the order that is most relevant to you. And you're skipping over parts that you already know of and focusing on the parts that you don't. Well, of course it's two, right? This is where syntopical reading really comes in. Syntopical reading is about reading multiple resources on the same topic, skimming through them and picking up the main ideas and comparing the different perspectives against one another. It really allows you to gather a clear picture of the concepts in one of the fastest ways possible. And it's not about reading every word, but instead strategically focusing on the keywords that you're interested in. And this allows you to cover a lot of material fast and it reduces the gaps in your knowledge simply because you're just reading from multiple different angles. So how did I use this for my exams? First, we need to get all the materials as we're going to read between them. Have all of your lecture slides open for easy access, uh, any complimentary textbooks as well, or maybe even open up some relevant websites. So for university students, I personally recommend this website called Studoku, which has all these uh, uploaded student notes, summaries, exam prep, uh, just for the course that you're going through. For this genetics exams, I used websites like Amboss, Pathoma, Up to Date, and various medical textbooks. And for learning other particular topics, I want to tell you about short form. Now, short form is something that I use on a weekly basis and is what I use for most of my learning outside of academic settings. Short form essentially provides book summaries on steroids that makes number one, priming and number two, syntopical reading very easy. And the reason is because short form provides a one page summary that gives you a very clear idea of how the book provides solutions for a certain problem. Once I've read the one page summary of multiple books, then I can dive into the chapter by chapter summary. And that's where there's also exercises that you can take to immerse yourself into what you're learning so that it's not just knowledge in your head, but now a skill that you can go ahead and use. But the biggest thing that I find useful when using short form is the commentary and analysis on each book, which literally compares the ideas of this book with similar books. And this saves me so much time since some of the steps of syntopical reading itself are already done for you. For example, when reading Hyperfocus, there are multiple notes that you can compare it directly to Indistractable and other books in the focus and productivity sphere. And it brings up certain inconsistencies 
are points of criticism or points of agreement. I am a big fan of short form, which is why they are the sponsor of this video, as I can use it whenever I need to go ahead and learn a new skill. Of course, we know books are full of years of knowledge condensed, and there is so much that can be harnessed from it. So by joining through my link, shortform.com slash Archer, you will receive a free trial of unlimited access and an additional 20% discounted annual subscription. This will give you access to thousands of book guides for the price of one book a month. Go to my link in the description to sign up now. So the first step of syntopical reading we talked about was to have all of the resources open. Number two is about actually syntopically reading itself. Based on the major key concepts and keywords that I primed before, I then start searching for the explanations of those concepts in the resources that I thought were best. The focus here is to read through it quickly enough to just get your head around it. So for example, in my prep for my final year exam, I was using command F to find these certain keywords on particular websites. And once I did this, then I could move on to the next resource to see what it also has to say about this certain keyword. And then I can compare it with my understanding from the first resource. And here I do exactly the same, right? Instead of me looking at the website, I'm now looking at the lecture slides and making that comparison. So you can go ahead, you can repeat this with many other resources and up until the point where you're relatively happy when with that understanding of these different perspectives. And I might do this for two to three resources before moving on. So once we are happy with these major perspectives around that certain concept, we move on to the next logical concept that might be related to what we've just been talking about. So when I was just going through all the stuff for genetics, if I just learned right now about the Robertsonian translocations, then my next thought is to move on to the isochromosomes because they are very related and they are talked about together all of the time. So now that you know how to syntopically read, well, how do we then learn everything with this? Well, it comes down to learning through layers of detail. And this saved me for my genetics exam. As I went through the first part of my material, all I was just doing is get learning just enough to understand how to roughly piece it together. Because once I have done this, and I've covered it just enough, I've covered a lot of bases. And I can do this now all again in increasing detail. And this is much preferred versus going into all of the detail on a few concepts and just knowing completely nothing for everything else. Learning in these layers is so important because it maximizes your time in your revision before your exam. And to let you in on a little secret, I was literally learning some concepts in the exam just through reading the questions and prompts. This is because I wasn't able to cover Cover all of the layers in my revision, but I had enough of a brief understanding of everything to piece it together to answer most of those questions. The purpose of all of this is simply not black and white just to get good grades. Sure, that's a part of it, but as I talked about before, life as a student can get rough. You will sometimes trip and fall, your loved ones will get hurt, you've got school, you've got work, relationships, and life, it just gets so hectic sometimes that it is so easy to get overwhelmed juggling so many plates. And that's why we want to be efficient. So even during the hardest periods of my life as a student, I could still stay afloat. And then from there, I could develop the skills, the resilience and willpower to continue forward. Study is something that takes so much of our our time. It is something that we can get really good at and it can make every aspect of our lives so much easier. So if you're interested in this, the next video on pre-studying will show you how to learn information far deeper on your first try.